at this point, we are going to leave Golden Gate Park to go into and take a slight sojourn through the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco. This is the new avant-garde left bank area of San Francisco, which has evolved and developed over the past number of years. In fact, uh, I would say that the last 18 months has seen a tremendous increase of the uh, so-called hippies who have uh, invaded and lived in this area. Now, this is a protest against the uh, middle and upper class people of San Francisco, in fact, of the area. Uh, it is the belief of the people who live within the area that uh, we, the middle class or the upper class, have done a very, very poor uh, job in uh, running our government and our way of life. There are two of you together, just one, if I may. There we are. We're going to be educated now. is a hippie in early teens. TL is tenderloin. Trip is an LSD experience. Turn on is to commence a far out experience is to turn on with LSD. Weed is marijuana. And this is the heart of it now as we turn here onto this street, which is Hate Street. So this is the heart of the area. I would say this is confined to approximately a 24 block square area. And not all of them are young, as you can see by looking on the corner here on the right. Print Mint, the psychedelic bookshop. The psychedelic shop on Haight Street is the shrine of the hippie movement. Started just over a year ago, it spreads the gospel of a dreamy new utopia based on brotherhood and love and LSD. Ron Thielen, the owner, says LSD has, in hippie language, turned him on, made him aware of the insanity of modern society. He wants to drop out, get back to the simple tribal life of the American Indian. American Indian beads, brooches, along with Hindu and Buddhist charms, serve as tribal badges for hippies. The American Indians are the oldest users of LSD in the world. They've used psychedelic drugs like peyote in their religious ceremonies for hundreds of years. So many hippies see themselves as reincarnated Indians. But the hate street of the hippies has become a multicolored carnival where anything goes. thousand hippies have invaded Haight-Ashbury in the past year. Maybe three quarters use drugs regularly. Tablets for a trip cost about 25 shillings and they're all too easy to get. Arrests for drug taking in Haight-Ashbury have trebled over the past year, though the police plan is not to harass the hippies too much in case they move to other areas. They want to keep them in one easily controllable district. The mayor of San Francisco has already warned against a summer invasion of Haight-Ashbury by a hundred thousand hippies from all over America and has stepped up police patrols in the area. But there's little lawlessness among the hippies of Hate Ashbury. Love is their gospel and they're even hoping to change Hate Street's name to Love Street. Love is everywhere, stimulated and heightened by doses of LSD, which create a climate of happiness and fellow feeling. The love generated isn't only the spiritual kind. 
Hippies are colourful and filmable, and the tourists are flocking to hate Ashbury, forsaking even the city's topless nightclubs for the hippie street show. Like San Francisco locals, many of the visitors are amazed that these mostly middle-class, well-educated Americans, many of them living on money sent from home, should choose to drop out of the most affluent society in the world to create their own love ghetto. A non-political brotherhood of happy hippies determined to love the establishment into its grave. Haight Ashbury, once a decaying working class district, is now on the map as Hippieville. Though the tourists may think it more like a breeding ground for unwashed beatniks than a psychedelic Shangri-La, the more serious hippies see it as the basis of a new society. Well, I think what's happening in San Francisco is the only meaningful thing that's happening in this country and quite possibly the world. Uh, right now, 60% of the resources of the world are controlled by the United States. Um, we have a kind of uh, militant right-wing mentality in government, which is addicted to symbols and can relate to the world in no other way than by symbols. And the only way to free myself from it is to uh, consciously remove myself from it, consciously drop out of it. I can't just run from it and escape because it's insane. I have to understand the insanity. So then when I go to the country, I'll know why I'm in the country. But how much is the understanding, is the heightened perception that's necessary here dependent on drugs, LSD, speed? Um, LSD or psychedelic chemicals are just tools of consciousness. They're like a microscope, like a scientist uses a microscope to enlarge. Um, one takes psychedelic chemicals or studies yoga or meditation and um, looks inward and try to find out why he's on this earth, what his purpose is, who he is, what he's here for. Do you see a whole uh, lots of towns all over America full of hippies with this movement? Something like that, yeah. Only I think people are leaving the cities, they're going out to the country. That's what I'm trying to do, is get out to the country. And I just have to, it has to be done harmoniously, it has to be done gracefully, it has to be done consciously. And what you would can't happen? just cut and run. You know, you what would happen in the, in, in the country? I mean, wh how do you see life in the country? I see myself living in the teepee, man, sitting around a fire, growing my own food and making my own clothes. Essentially, you know, that's a simple, simple way to state it, but that's what I see. Do you think that's a real possibility? Oh, very definitely. It's happening. Some hippies are even getting back to nature in Hate Street itself. A group of hippies called the Diggers have decided to plant tomatoes around the trees to beautify the street and grow their own food. Diggers are people who share, says their manifesto, and their aim is a society where everything is shared, everything free. They already have one communal farm outside San Francisco, and another is planned in Mexico, where they want to grow marijuana. Most days, they provide free food to hungry hippies in Panhandle Park. It's usually leftovers and handouts from local shopkeepers. Besides free food, the diggers have tried to set up communal houses where newly arrived hippies can be taken in. But the city government have closed down overcrowded digger dwellings and they can't cope with the growing numbers of hippie immigrants. The diggers' emphasis on love and their deliberate naivety are typical of the whole hippie movement. Their free shop looks more like a playground at first sight or a youth club. It's also reminiscent of a welfare centre and an arty, crafty evening class. Here they make sheets and clothes for other hippies who can come and take what they want without paying anything for it. One of the diggers' problems has been finding rooms where they could set up their organisation. The only person to help so far has been Father Leon Harris, an Episcopalian minister. He's lent them a room in his church basement against opposition from his congregation who don't share his sympathy for the hippies. Uh, these people have, uh, that is the real hippies I'm speaking of, not the hangers-on, seem to have a deep uh, yearning for a spiritual thing. Uh, they feel that uh, if an atmosphere of love can be established, uh, the world's problems will dissolve. They 
place very great emphasis upon this indeed, and they do exemplify it uh, in their lives. They are very kindly people, and they show this loving attitude in many ways. For example, very often you see uh, a hippie going down the street offering a flower to anyone who will take it. Uh, there was a girl the other day holding a large tray on which there were 25 cent pieces, and she was going from one person to another saying, please take some. And uh, they are uh, very helpful to people in need. They share uh, whatever they have with anyone who needs it, and that, uh, that uh, indicates their loving attitude. The hippies' celebration of loving attitudes often takes place in a happening, which for them is a beautiful, meaningful event that occurs spontaneously. On most weekends, spontaneously or otherwise, there seems to be a happening on Haight Street, complete with music and joysticks. may start spontaneously, its end is usually quite predictable. Since love is the hippie code, even the police are treated to it. Don't give them the satisfaction of arresting you, is one of the hippie ground rules on such occasions. can celebrate at less spontaneous happenings too. At the local Fillmore Ballroom, noise and colour and movement are combined in a mass assault on the senses. And the whole effect of the music and the changing patterns of brilliantly coloured light is to give even non-addicts the second-hand sensation of taking an LSD trip. The amplifiers are turned up, the audience is turned on.
world of the hippies certainly seems seductive, full of flowers, colours, music and love. The flower people, the hippies call themselves, as opposed to the plastic generation of square or straight society. The products of the richest, most highly mechanised country on earth. They want to forget it all for the brilliant visions of a simpler life, glimpsed under the influence of drugs. Hippies defend LSD by saying it's non-addictive and they claim it causes no bodily harm. But the psychiatric wards of San Francisco's General Hospital are getting more and more cases of hippies suffering from bad LSD trips. Dr. Arthur Kafani, director of psychiatric admissions there, emphasized that a bad trip can occur at any time. Uh, what may be beautiful in one moment may a uh, few seconds thereafter be rather frightening, to almost to the point of uh, a complete break with reality or a psychosis. And uh, this hardly squares with my concept of beauty, or I think anyone else's, to be acutely so frightened that one has lost control of oneself. So that there is another side of the coin, I think, that people should realize that these drugs are not all a one-way path to, uh, you know, the, uh, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but they're, it's a rather two-edged sword in that it can produce a very, very disturbing uh, psychological and perhaps even physical reaction which could lead to permanent damage uh, in the person's behavior or even the person's thinking. Are there physical dangers, do you think, to these I think, drugs? I think that prolonged use of LSD or the psychedelic drugs can produce and does produce uh, physical changes in the brain and as such, which may not be reversible and which certainly are shown by the person's behavior. Uh, and I think there's reason to believe that it does cause brain damage over, prolonged, uh, over a prolonged period of time, prolonged usage. I would think one or two times, no, but yeah, prolonged usage does. A great many of them definitely do feel that these drugs have opened the way to uh, apprehensions of eternal verities, to religious uh, visions and experiences. Sometimes they felt even coming face to face with God. But isn't there a danger that there are more pe people who come here for the kicks and not this yes. religious thing? There is that great danger and there are definite signs that uh, the number of those who are coming just for the excitement is the increasing. Kicks. Yes, just for kicks. And sometimes, unfortunately, to exploit the situation for their own purposes, uh, uh, professional rabble-rousers, people, trying to uh, foment uh, riots and uh, um, drug pushers, so on. Do you think there's a danger that as the, this place becomes more popular, as more tourists come in, that this feeling will then be destroyed by commercialism, by all the shops doing good business? I don't think so, because uh, I think this economy, this, this, this system is dying right now. It's, it's, in its, it's in the throes of death. It's not working. That's why all these people are down here. That's why there's so much interest in the hate ashbury because it offers some kind of hope. Uh, it, it seems to suggest to all the people out there that are, that are confused and hungry for some kind of spiritual meaning life, that there is, there is hope, and they're down here looking. But when hundreds of people come in, there's hundreds, well, thousands of people come in, how can you fit all these people in and out that some of them just sensation seekers and people are here for the kicks and not for any, any enlightenment, any meaning? Well, I don't, I mean, I couldn't say why they, why people are coming here uh, for every person that's coming here or that they're not all really after enlightenment. It's quite possible everybody that comes here is after enlightenment. They may be all be, all be pilgrims. Uh, they may not manifest their search in uh, an articulated uh, as well as other people might, but that I think is the subconscious motive for coming. No, I don't. I think uh, we'll just have a beautiful summer, man, with people playing drums in the park and turn on the city of San Francisco. Many predict that there'll be no beautiful summer for the hippies of San Francisco, that the dreamy bohemia of Haight Ashbury will be destroyed, like the beat generation of the 50s, by thrill seekers, tourists, and commercial exploiters. The psychedelic love generation of the 60s may find that it takes more than new words and new drugs to conquer the old order.
Well, that's it. That's about the size of it. Uh, we've seen uh, the better or the worst of it, of the Haight-Ashbury district. And now back into Golden Gate Park, and our next stop will be the Japanese Tea Garden, the end of the Haight-Ashbury sojourn.